Resources are required for the execution of a project being a comprehensive category resource include equipment, tools, time, material, and people. One example of resource planning is the process of allocating tasks to team members based on their capacity, skill set, and the best fit for the job. It maximizes efficiency by helping team manage their utilization rate, track capacity, monitor progress, and keep projects on budget as well as the work on track. This planning is needed to map out specific quantities of necessary storable and non-storable resource successfully. The objective of this planning project is to simplify and assist with work activities, making the job of a manager significantly easier. In this course, you will learn to identify, forecast, and allocate various business resources to the project at the right time. With the help of a few examples, we will understand the importance of a resource planning, estimating the resource required and the consequences of poor resource planning, along with a few tools available to do the job. So if you are somebody who is interested in this topic, you are at the right place. So without any further delay, let's start the video. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and I will respond to your comments. Hello, my name is Shantanu Rana and today I will be teaching you this course on resource planning by Great Learning. In this particular course, I will be telling you what exactly is a resource and we will be seeing how to plan these resources, how to manage these resources when we talk about project management. Whenever you try to manage a project, there are several tasks in that. And for each and every task, there will be certain uh, resources which are required. Now, these resources can be financial resources, can be human resources, and can be non-financial resources as well. Now, it completely depends upon you how you utilize these resources in order to make sure that the processes are efficient and effective. In this particular course, we will be exploring each and everything related to planning of these resources. So, let's not waste any time and directly move to the agenda where I will be telling you all the modules that we will be covering in this particular course one by one. So as you can see on the screen, the first thing that we are going to discuss in this particular course is what is resource planning, where I'll be telling you what exactly is a resource, then how to manage these resources and the definition of resource planning. Then resource planning examples, I will be giving you the examples of resource planning. For example, if you talk about, let's say, e-commerce industry then the resource planning will be a little different. If you talk about the construction industry, then it will be a little different. So certain examples from different industries will take in this particular module, then consequences of poor resource planning. We are uh, reading about resource planning or I am teaching you about resource planning. But what exactly is the point of that? What if the resource planning is poor? How it is going to affect the deliverables, the deadlines? What can happen? those poor consequences will be seeing in the third module then importance of resource planning why is it so important that is something we will be exploring here then important steps in resource planning now you know that resource planning is important but how to move forward with that what are the different steps different stages which are involved in resource planning that is something we will be exploring in this particular module then estimating the resources which includes your forecasting the resources and various approaches in order to estimate the resources that this is the project that I have. This is the objective that I want to achieve. So what are the resources which I need to forecast in order to make sure that we have those resources and there is no limitation on that so that we can ensure that all the processes are effective and we reach the goal of the project. So that can be done if you estimate the resources and you manage the resources properly. So we'll be seeing some techniques for that as well. Then resource planning in construction and human resource planning. These two are nothing but your examples. So whatever we will study about resource planning, we will try to implement that on construction industry and then in human resource department, that is human resource planning, which is also known as your manpower planning. Then finally, at the end of this course, I'll be teaching you about resource planning tools and their benefits. So what are the top tools that we have in the market 
and what are the different benefits that we can get from these technologies dif different different tools so all these things we will be covering in this particular course one by one this is a beginner friendly course and there's nothing that you're supposed to know so let's just uh, cover all of these topics one by one all right now let's talk about what is resource planning but before we actually get into the depth of resource planning or resource management it is important for us to understand that what is a resource in project management at the first place so whenever you talk about any project the input which is required in order to meet the specified needs of that project is nothing but your resource as you can see on the screen as well that a resource is an essential asset whose primary purpose whose main goal is to assist in the completion of a task or a project examples of resources can be a person a team a tool time and finances and this is not just limited to that there can be several examples of resources you just talk about any project be it in any industry in e-commerce industry in construction industry maybe in the human resource department you talk about any project there will always be some people who are required who will be performing the duties their responsibilities there will be some specific tools which will be required in order to meet the specified needs there will be some budgeting finances that has to be handled now all this comes under the umbrella of resource planning so a resource is an essential asset in order to make sure that we meet the specified needs of the project if you want to meet the goals objectives of the projects you have to make sure that you have enough resources in terms of human resources in terms of financial resources in terms of time in terms of technology any tool any software which is required you have to have a proper planning for that only then we can make sure that the processes will be efficient and we will be able to meet the goal of the project there's a small note as well that resources should be allocated before a project begins just imagine that you have a project going on and in the middle of it you realize that to do this particular task you need eight people but actually you have only six that will be a mismatch between the competencies and that's not a great idea there will be bad consequences of that so in order to make sure that we are going in a smooth direction and we are going to meet the goals you have to allocate the resources you have to estimate the resources before a project begins if you will do it in the middle maybe you will have to do the entire work again because there will be bad consequences of not allocating the resources in the beginning itself so always make sure whenever you are going to begin with the project you always have a proper estimation proper forecasting and proper allocation of resources for each and every task within that particular project now let's move forward and have a look at the definition of resource planning so what is resource planning the process of identifying forecasting and assigning various types of resources to the projects at an appropriate time and cost is known as resource planning there are three important terms here identifying forecasting and assigning whenever you talk about any project life cycle in any industry the first thing that you have to do is you have to identify the resources that what are the types of resources which will be required for this particular type of project then you have to forecast the resources you have to evaluate each and everything that these many people we already have these many people will be required you have to find that mismatch that gap and you have to fill it depending upon that you will make certain technologies certain you know strategies and you will move forward with that but that estimation and that forecasting is extremely important once that is done then you have to assign which is also known as your allocation first of all you will estimate the resources which are required for a particular project then you will forecast the resources and then finally you will assign or you will allocate those resources to that particular task or to that particular project and that will make sure that we will meet the specified needs of that particular project then there are some important points as well about resource planning point number one is that resource planning includes allocating tasks to team members based on their capacity skill sets abilities and best fit for the work just imagine that for a particular task 10 people are required to perform that task now if we have only eight people we have to make sure how to utilize them in such a way that these eight people can perform that task 
or we can hire two more people and we'll have 10 people in total and they can perform the task. So all this planning plotting part is also nothing but comes under the umbrella of resource planning. If for a particular task, one person is not suitable, you have to put that person in some other task and you have to make sure that there is somebody who can fill that position in that person's place. So we have to analyze the skill set, the capacity of each and every person, of each and every human who's involved in that project. And based upon that, we have to allocate or assign the tasks to them. So that is nothing but your human resource planning, manpower planning. We will be reading or studying about it in detail in the end of this particular course. Then resource planning guarantees that the business resources are used effectively and efficiently across the project life cycle. If we have a project starting from initiation phase to the closing phase of the project, you have to plan the resources. You have to start from the very beginning by identifying, forecasting and assigning the resources. And then finally, you have to control the processes. If you will uh, try to manage the resources in the middle of the project, that will not be a great idea because that will cost you your energy, time, efforts and money as well. So that's definitely going to have some poor consequences. So in order to make sure that you are managing your project in a very efficient, smooth and effective way, you have to plan the resources. Resource planning is extremely important. All right. So now that you have understood what exactly is a resource in project management and what is resource planning, let me give you some examples for resource planning. So let's talk about the software development project. Any development project you can take where we are trying to develop, let's say, an application or something like that in IT industry. Then project managers will first of all understand the client's requirements and forecast and evaluate the resource demand. So here I am trying to tell you how exactly resource planning in different industries will work. I'm going to give you examples from different different industries. Right now we are taking the example of an IT industry where we are taking the software development project. So first thing is the project manager will understand the requirements from the client or from the customer and then they will forecast and evaluate the resource demand. Once they will talk to the customer, they will have an idea that these are the types of resources and these are the kinds of resources which will be required for this particular requirement for these particular specified needs. So that will be the work of a project manager. Once that is done, then the project uh, project manager will request resources from resource manager to fulfill this demand. Then the resource manager will now estimate the gap between the demand and available resources and will look for different ways to fill this gap. Let's say the project manager realizes that we need 10 members to do a particular task according to the needs of the clients or the customer. Then he will escalate the same to the resource manager. He will say that we need 10 members to perform this task. Now it is the duty of the resource manager to figure out how they can give them the 10 members to actually complete that particular task. They will see whether they have those many members available or they need to hire people, they need to fire people, what exactly they need to do. For that, they need to make certain strategies, some technologies, some techniques they need to imply and that will be done by the resource managers. So the resource managers will now estimate the gap between the demands, the competencies that they actually have and the uh, competencies which are actually required. So they'll find that gap and they'll try to fill it. Then this ability to forecast resources and design a strategy for allocating and utilizing resources efficiently is known as resource planning. So in this entire process, if you see first what we have done is we have estimated the resources which is done by the project managers. Then they are going to uh, escalate the same thing to the resource manager who are then going to forecast the resources. They are going to find the gap between the available resources and the demand which is there for a particular project. Once that is done, then you finally assign the resources, which is allocating that we have already seen that assigning the resources, estimating the resources, forecasting the resources. That is nothing but your resource planning. So that's what in this particular scenario in an IT industry is called resource planning. Now, let me give you more examples from some other industries as well. So IT industry, we have already seen that IT companies face rapid advancements in automation and technology. 
efficient resource planning or effective resource planning and timely prediction of business resources will help the managers predict the demand for required skill sets well in advance. It, it is there in every industry that automation and technology is required these days. But when you talk about IT industry, these companies face a rapid advance, advancement in terms of automation or technologies. So if you want to estimate the resources for particular projects, the project is never going to be a success. So in order to make sure that all the processes are effective and efficient, you have to make sure that you are managing the processes, you are managing the resources from the very beginning itself. So definitely resource planning is extremely important when we are talking uh, about IT industry. Then if we talk about construction industry, due to fluctuating weather circumstances and sudden surges in maintenance activities, resource demand for construction and infrastructure projects is particularly volatile. It's more fluid because it always depends upon when you talk about any construction projects, it depends upon different things. It depends upon, uh, you know, the labor that is there. It depends upon the weather as well. Some of these things will directly impact the project and some of these uh, resources will indirectly impact the resources. So we can say that in construction industry, these resources are more volatile, more fluid. So proper resource planning maximizes the productive utilization of the workforce and ensures that resource conflicts are minimal. Resource conflicts can be a very big issue if you talk about construction industry. But if you have a proper plan in place, you know how to manage these resources, how to allocate these resources, then definitely you can reduce these things and you can save your energy, efforts, money and time in order to make sure that you meet the specified needs of the particular construction project. Same is the case for law firms as well. Now we'll see how exactly resource planning can benefit in these particular firms. So an efficient resource planning strategy aids in the assessments of future demands and the identification of the appropriate resource. Now in this particular case, when you're talking about law firms, resources can be lawyers, legal secretaries, contractors, etc. at the appropriate cost and at an appropriate time as well. So these things are extremely important. So I hope you have understood what exactly is the benefit of planning for resources. Whenever you are managing any project, be it in IT industry, be it in construction industry, be it in any other industry as well, resource planning is extremely important. Reasons behind that can depend upon the industry. But eventually, whenever you're talking about a project, there is always some end goal. There is always some objective that we need to meet. In order to meet that objective, we should plan the resources from the very beginning itself. There is no specific time when you to plan for the resources. It has to come from the very beginning. Before even the project begins, you have to estimate the resources. You have to forecast the resources. And once the project starts, then you have to start allocating the resources to each and every task which is involved in that particular project. So that's how this entire process works. All right, now let's talk about the consequences of poor resource planning. We have understood what exactly is resource planning and how things work when we talk about managing a resource in project management. But what if we do not follow it? What if we do not estimate the resources or we do not forecast the resources before the beginning of the project? What are the consequences that we'll have to face? This is something that we will be discussing in this particular module. So there are several points that I have mentioned, which are nothing but the consequences of poor resource planning. So point number one is improper resource allocations. If you won't manage the resources properly, definitely the assigning, the allocation of the resources will be very uh, improper. Why? Let's say for a particular task, 10 people are required. And if I do not plan for the resources, then I may assign 12 members or I may assign eight members. So sometimes it can be over usage of the resources or sometimes it can be under usage of the resources. So we have to make sure that we assign the right number of resources to a right task at the right time and at the right cost. So all these things should be in sync. That's what proper resource planning is all about. So that can be one uh, consequence that improper resource allocations. Then second is employee dissatisfaction. Definitely, if you want to uh, uh, assign resources uh, as per the skill sets of the employees, they are going to feel uh, less productive and they will be dissatisfied as well. 
for example, let's say for a particular task in a particular project, one person is completely suitable for that. That person is having the competency, the abilities, knowledge and the skill set to do, to do that particular task. But if we'll assign some other member, some other person to do that task, then definitely they are going to feel dissatisfied and definitely the productivity will also be very, very less. So we have to make sure that we assign the right person to the right task. And that is also nothing but part of your resource planning because humans or the people are also resources known as your human resources. Then decrease productivity. That is something that we have already discussed that if we won't assign the right resource to the right task, then the overall productivity will decrease then unrealistic deadlines and decreased profitability. So if we won't assign the right resources and we won't keep in mind the uh, right cost, right time for planning the resources, definitely the deadlines will not be attainable. We won't be able to meet the deadlines. Let's say you are working on a project and there is this particular task that you have to finish in order to meet the objectives of that particular project. Now, in the middle of the project, if you'll figure out that, okay, we don't have the enough resources to do that, then you'll have to do the rework again, or maybe you'll have to, you know, start from the very beginning again. And that will definitely affect the deadline or the deliverables. So that's what unrealistic deadlines will be set if we won't plan for the resources. Then decreased profitability, project delay. If we won't meet the deadlines, definitely the project will be delayed. The deliverables will not be met then project failure can also be one of the consequences of poor resource planning. So what we can understand from all these points is that whenever we are working on a project, we have to make sure that we are planning for the resources from the very beginning itself. We have to estimate the resources which are required for each and every task and then we have to allocate those resources based upon the specified needs. If we won't follow that, then these are some of the consequences that we may have to face based upon the scope and the need of the particular project. All right, now let's discuss why is resource planning important? What is the importance of resource planning? So there are several points that I have mentioned over here and we will be discussing each of these points in details to understand the importance of resource planning or resource management. So first point is that resource planning is an essential determinant of whether or not a project will succeed. So if you don't manage the particular resources which are involved in a particular project, definitely the project is going to be a failure because that is one very important aspect. If you do not know what are the uh, resources which are required for a particular task, how to allocate those resources to each and every task, definitely the productivity will be very less, the project will be delayed and overall it can be a failure too. So your resource planning or resource management how do you estimate the resources? How do you forecast the resources? And finally, how do you assign or allocate those resources? All these things are very important determinant of whether or not a project will succeed. Then demand forecasting, one of the primary foundations of resource planning, determines if there is any excess or lack of resources by comparing resource demand to available capacity. Let's say we meet the client as a project manager, you meet the client and you understand the requirement of the client, then the first thing that you're going to do is demand forecasting. After understanding the requirements of the specified needs of the customer, you have to understand that what exactly is the demand that we need to have for the particular resources to meet the needs of this particular project. Now, how do you do that? You have to understand what are the available resources that you have, and then you have to compare it with the demand. Then you will find out whether we have resources in excess or in lack. If we have the available resources in lack, then maybe we need more resources. Now there should be certain techniques, certain strategies on how to get those excess resources. But if you have the available resources in excess, then you can utilize those resources at some other place in the organization or in the project. So based upon the demand forecasting only, you can make all these strategies and techniques. So excess capacity can be reduced by moving future project work forward, changing schedules, redeploying resource capacity to other projects, etc. 
so we if we have excess capacity then we can do any of these strategies we can follow it and that is only going to help us it will save our energy time money and efforts but if we have shortage of resources or lack of resources then it can be resolved through internal or external channels within the organization also or sometimes outside the organization also there can be several things that we can do let's say for a particular project eight members are required but we have 10 members then what we can do is the access to members which is nothing but your access of resources then we can utilize those two members at some other place in the same project in the same organization in some other department and we can utilize them so that the productivity is maintained and the entire process is very very effective and the profitability is maximum so that's how you ensure it first of all you have to compare the demand with the available resources and then you have to find out whether we have resources in excess or in lack and based upon that you have to make the strategies in order to make sure that the process is very very smooth then effective resource planning ensures a decrease in project costs and increase in profitability that is something we have already discussed then resource planning can lead to the achievement of the most significant project metrics such as customer happiness higher retention and brand loyalty whenever you talk about any project how do you measure the success or the failure of any project by understanding that what exactly is the retention of the customers whether customers are happy or not whenever you talk about any project it starts with the customer and it ends with the customer so you have to understand the success of a project by understanding the retention the brand loyalty or the happiness of the customers who are going to use that particular product or unique service now that determinant is nothing but your resource planning if you'll plan all the resources properly definitely that is only going to make your project a big success then effective resource planning ensures the project delivery on time as i told you that if you won't plan the resources properly you will have to do the rework so many times that will delay the project deadlines and the deliverables but if you will plan for the resources properly you will estimate forecast and assign the resources with proper strategies in mind then everything will be in place and you will be able to finish the project on time and all the deliverables will be met so that's the beauty and the importance of planning for resources or managing the resources all right so now that you have understood the importance of resource planning let's see what are some of the important steps in resource planning when you want to plan for resources you want to manage the resources what are the steps that you need to take in a particular project that is something we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen broadly speaking there are four steps which are involved in resource planning step number 1 is a certain resources first of all you need to know what are the resources which are required to perform that particular task to do that particular project once you'll ascertain the resources then you have to procure the resources as we have seen in the it industry example as well that first of all the project manager will see what exactly is the requirement of the client and based upon that he'll get to know the demand the resource demand once that is done then he'll escalate the same to the uh, resource manager so that is nothing but procure resources once you know the demand once you have ascertained the resources you have to procure those resources then manage the resources and finally control the resources it's not like you know that okay these are the resources which are required for a particular task and everything is going to work on its own you have to manage those resources as well and if there is any let's say over usage or under usage of resources you have to manage it and you have to control it so step number 1 is you ascertain the resources then you procure the resources then third is manage the resources and then finally fourth step is you control the resources based upon how far we are from achieving our goals whether we are over uh, using the resources or we are under using the resources based upon that you have to make this control techniques as well so broadly uh, if we divide again these steps into further steps there will be eight total steps that we need to follow step number 1 determine the objectives of the projects whenever you talk about any project before you even get onto resource planning you should know what exactly is the main goal of this particular project so for example let's say for a particular project we do not have uh, uh, we do not want to uh, start with the quality we want to measure the quantity 
that will be a different scenario if you want to focus on quality that will be a different scenario so for each and every project the objective will be different sometimes you will focus on the quality sometimes you will focus on the quantity sometimes it's about a unique product sometimes it's about an existing service so there can be different scenarios in that first thing that you should do is you need to determine the objectives the main goals of that particular project once that is done then you move forward and you evaluate the resources needed to reach that goal that okay this is the desired position for this particular project now how will you reach that desired position you need some inputs for that some resources for that so you need to estimate or evaluate the resources needed once that is done then you make the right strategy to utilize the resources efficiently and cost effectively now you have understood that these are the resources which are required in order to reach that particular goal but how will you use those resources so that you can save your time energy money you can be cost effective and you can be efficient and effective in general how will you make sure that for that you have to make the right strategies right techniques that's your third step then fourth step is you have to assemble the team and develop the procurement needs now once everything is set up you know what are the goals where you are supposed to reach at you have the list of the resources for that and you have the right strategy also that how are you going to utilize those resources now we need humans in this entire process we need to have a team and we need to develop the procurement needs once that is done then you need to define the roles and responsibilities of the team what will be the work of the project manager what will be the work of the resource manager what will be the work of the particular team in a particular project in any given industry it is going to work in the same way then identify define investigate and analyze the issues and bottlenecks you have designed the resources you have uh, understood the demand of the particular project you have the right strategies also but definitely in this changing environment there will be some bottlenecks some issues now how are you going to sort that out that should also be part of your resource planning then monitor the resources during execution to see whether we are using it to the right extent whether right people are used at the right space in the right time or not those are certain things that you have to keep in mind during the execution as well planning part is done before even the project begins but once the project starts that does not mean we completely stop caring about the resource management then also we have to see whether we are following the standards the plans the strategies that we need to follow in order to meet the objectives of the particular project then finally we perform cost benefit analysis and check the resource utilization rate we understand how uh, what we have actually learned from that particular project we take those learnings and we try to implement that in the next project as well so that's the final step so you start with uh, learning uh, determining the objectives of a project and finally you end with doing the cost benefit analysis and take the learnings from a particular project in terms of resource planning or resource management all right now let's talk about estimating the resources so we have understood that before the project begins before that itself we need to estimate the resources we need to evaluate the resources and then we have to manage and control the resources during the execution of the project so how do you estimate the resources that is something we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen the main goal or the objective of resource estimation or resource evaluation is to allocate or assign the required resources to each task on the list if you talk about a project as a whole there will be a lot of resources which will be required in order to meet the objectives of that project so that will be very difficult to calculate all of that to evaluate all of that so rather than that what we can do is we can break down one particular project into various tasks and for each and every task we can evaluate or estimate what are the resources which are required now how exactly you can estimate that number of resources for that we have some tools and techniques over here i have written four tools and techniques but this is not limited to that it always depends upon the scope and the type of project that you are trying to manage and based upon that there can be various tools and techniques for resource planning or resource estimation so number one over here is the judgment of experts this is very useful when it comes to construction projects especially so this involves seeking the help of experts who have previously completed a similar type of work 
So if you know somebody who has done a similar type of work and currently you are managing that kind of project. So definitely you can reach out to those people and you can take their judgment as their learnings and you can implement the same in your task in your project. That will definitely give you an idea and you can estimate the resources. For example, let's take the example of uh, some construction industry. You are going to uh, build a building, you are going to build a particular structure when we are talking about a construction industry. Now there will be so many resources, let's say a number of bricks, the number of people who are required to manage that particular uh, task, manage that particular project. If somebody has already done that kind of work, we can definitely reach out to that person and we can ask that person that how many bricks will be required, what will be the amount of, uh, you know, uh, work that will be done, uh, how many people will be required to perform this particular task in this particular project. So all those things we can simply ask from the judgment of the experts who have previously done the similar type of work. Then second one is alternative analysis. This involves considering alternatives for resource allocation then this includes adjusting the number and type of resources available. So whenever you have a particular task, you can think of various methods. So keep it as alternative 1, 2, 3, 4 and then calculate the pros and cons of each and every alternative and then based upon that, you can allocate or assign the resources. Whenever you will see that the number of pros are maximum in this particular alternative and that is suitable for the kind of project that we are working on, definitely you can go with that particular uh, alternative, that particular option. The next one is published estimation data. These are based on the articles and research that analyze data from other organizations or companies projects. So if other organizations have done a similar type of project, you can see the articles and research and you can analyze that data and those learnings, key learnings you can implement in your task in your project. That is also one way. Then the last one which is actually very commonly used is the bottom up estimate. This involves breaking down the complicated tasks into simpler steps and processing the resources required for each one. Rather than seeing the project as a whole, what you can do is you can break the entire project, the entire complicated task into various simpler tasks. And then for each and every task, you can see what are the resources required. That to perform this particular task, 10 people will be required. And this much budgeting will be required. And these many equipment will be required. It can be financial, human, non-financial resources. And you can allocate resources to each and every simple task rather than assigning resources to the entire project in one go. So that will be very simple process. So these are certain tools and techniques that you can use for estimating the resources. And resource estimation is extremely important. Then only you can make sure that your project is going to be a success. Because if you want to estimate the resources and then plan accordingly, definitely you will have to go for rework. It will cost you your time, energy, cost and a lot of money as well. So that is not going to help you in any way while you are going to manage the project. So make sure whenever you're working on any project, you estimate the resources, then plan accordingly, manage those resources and while executing, you have to control as well. All right. Now let's talk about ERP. That is enterprise resource planning. Whenever you try to search about uh, resource planning or you have ever heard about resource planning, you'll see that on an enterprise level, we generally talk about ERP softwares. That is nothing but your enterprise resource planning softwares and tools. Now, how do you go about it? What are the benefits of these ERP softwares? And how do you use these ERP softwares in different departments within an organization? That is something we will be exploring in this particular module. So as you can see on the screen that enterprise resource planning or ERP is a process used by organizations, companies to integrate and manage the important aspects of their business operations. Whenever you talk about any business, any department, let's say within an organization, there is HR department. So there are some business processes that will happen on everyday basis. I'm not talking about the projects. Projects is generally a one time activity where we have to develop a, a unique product or a service. But when you talk about business processes, which are the daily operations, the day to day operations, then we need certain software so that we can make all the processes efficient and effective. You talk about the HR department, you talk about the sales department, the logistics department, the asset team, the resource managers, they all need certain tools with the help of which they can actually manage all these processes and they can make sure that all these business processes are very, very efficient. There is no wastage of time, energy or money. 
so erp softwares helps the uh, managers effectively manage all the business processes business day-to-day -day operations needed to run an organization such as hr finance manufacturing supply chain procurements etc and these benefits are not just limited to that there are so many benefits of these erp softwares number one is reduced cost definitely if you will use a particular software to manage all these day-to-day -day business processes you will save a lot on the cost you can save a lot of money because if you will, will not uh, manage all these processes with the help of a erp software then definitely you may have to go for rework or maybe all these processes won't be very efficient you will be wasting a lot of time and if you are wasting time definitely you are wasting cost as well because in that particular time there is potential for your organization to earn some money so you are losing that potential time that means you are losing the money as well so definitely if you will uh, use some erp softwares enterprise resource planning you can reduce the costs then improved operations overall the processes will be very effective and efficient the productivity will increase then improved accuracy as well if a person is doing something there are chances that you can make a mistake that is a basic human nature but if a software a tool is doing something there are no chances that it is going to make a mistake if we set it in it is only going to help us and there will be a uh, very high chances that it will be completely accurate and there won't be any silly mistakes in that some examples for that can be if you talk about the logistics team then it requires an erp system to deliver the right products and services to clients on time so we can meet the deadlines with the help of erp software and we can make sure that the right product and the service is delivered to the right client or right customer so that's uh, where erp software is used when we talk about the logistics team similarly if you talk about sales team to manage all customer orders again you can use the erp softwares if you talk about the finance team then it needs an erp system to close the books quickly otherwise it can be a very lengthy process so that's the whole point of using erp softwares that it uh, saves a lot of time and your energy and money and that's why cost will be reduced productivity and profitability will be increasing and overall accuracy will increase the operations will be more efficient and more effective so that's the advantage of using erp softwares or erp system within the different departments in your organization all right now let's talk about resource planning in construction so when we talk about construction industry what is the importance of resource planning and if we plan the resources we manage the resources how it is going to help in our project that is something we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen that construction firms face the challenge of completing often difficult projects on time within a specified budget and with a decent profit margin so whenever you talk about any project within the construction industry let's say you have to build a structure or let's say you have to build a bridge anything like that there will always be so many challenging tasks in that you have to complete that entire project within a specified time within a specified budget which will be less generally and then with a decent profit margin also you have to make sure that there is profitability also at the end of the project now how do you do all of this in this challenging situation when you are managing a project in the construction industry by planning the resources by managing the resources so construction resources can include materials which can be your bricks concrete anything construction plant tools and equipment human resources that is extremely important when you are talking about construction industry your labor people who are going to manage the project project managers then your site engineers all of them comes under your human resources then subcontractors uh, finance etc all these are nothing but your construction resources the inputs in order to make sure that you meet the objectives of the project then proper resource planning keeps projects on track by ensuring that project resource demands are met and by maximizing resource use from project to project so that is the whole point of planning for resources that you can make the entire process very very efficient and very very effective so if you'll plan for these resources which can be your construction material human resources financial resources anything if you'll manage it definitely it is going to make sure that the project is going to be a success and it you are going to be profitable at the end of the day then resource planning can be used to ensure resource availability if you are managing a particular task in a particular construction project you will make sure that the resources are available to perform that particular task so that that can be ensured by resource planning then you can resolve resource conflicts 
there won't be any conflicts between the contractors the engineers the project managers because everything you will have planned out you will know what are the resources which are required to do that particular task and those resources will be available because you have estimated and evaluate the resources in advance before even beginning the project then you can save efforts time and money just imagine that if you do not plan for resources and you have started the project and in the middle of it you realize that you need more resources to perform this particular task definitely you may have to go for rework or maybe the quality will not be that good so that will you will lose on a lot of money time energy and efforts so in order to make sure that you save efforts time and money you have to plan the resources then determine any constraints such as weather site access etc all these things will also be a part of resource planning and you can also keep a track of resource utilization you can even do the uh, cost benefit analysis you can see how much you have spent and what exactly is the output how far we are from meeting the objectives of the construction project that we are working on so all these things can be ensured by resource planning when we are talking about the construction industry all right so now that you have understood about uh, resource planning in the construction industry it is time for us to discuss about resource planning whenever we are talking about the human resource management so in hrm what is the role of resource planning and how exactly you go about what are the different stages in human resource planning so this is called your hrp and it is also known as manpower planning that how do you plan for the manpower for the human resources of any organization so as you can see on the screen that human resource planning which is also known as hrp is the practice of estimating the optimal number of employees required to complete a project job or objective on time just imagine that we have a particular project now you have to find out how many people how many human resources are actually required to perform that particular project to perform that particular task the optimal number of people it should not be more than what exactly is required and it should not also be less than what exactly is required because if it will be less than what exactly is required that is definitely an example of bad resource planning and it is going to cost you a lot of energy efforts and money later on while you will be executing the project if the number of people are more than what exactly is required then productivity will decrease and profitability will also decrease because that will not be very optimal for that particular task because less number of people can be uh, can perform that task and then the remaining people who are in excess can do some other task so how do you find out that optimal number there are some steps written for that and that is something i will be explaining so shortages and surpluses can be identified by human resource planning or manpower planning allowing for prompt action whenever it is needed it is the continuous process of systematic planning ahead to achieve optimum use of an organization's most valuable asset what is the most valuable asset for any organization the human resources if we have all other resources present but there are no human resources to manage those resources then we can never put anything in place so in order to make sure that each and everything is on pace on time we are meeting the deadlines we are meeting the objectives of each and every project of each and every business process we have to make sure that we are planning for the human resources in a very good way there should be proper plan proper management so steps involved in resource planning includes number 1 is analyzing the organizational goals first of all you should know what exactly is the mission of the organization vision of the organization what is that that the organization want to achieve what is the desired position once you are aware of that you have analyzed that then we'll move forward then second thing is analysis of the current manpower inventory how many people we currently have let's say for a particular task 10 people are required and we know that currently we have eight members that means we need to hire two more members so first of all you have to see how many people we currently have for that particular task or project or any objective then future manpower forecasting then you have to forecast then you have to evaluate how many people will actually be required to do a particular task we have eight people but how many people will actually be required let's say 10 so that is your future manpower forecasting or future human resource forecasting then we have to perform this then estimating manpower gaps once you have forecasted that these many people are required to do a particular task and currently we have these many people then you have to find that difference you have to find that mismatch and according to that you have to formulate the final action plan so let's say for a particular task 
first of all we will see how many people we currently have let's say we have six members to perform a task then we'll do the future manpower forecasting and we'll get to know that we actually need 10 people to do this task but we currently have only six so 10 minus 6 is 4 that means the gap is of four people so we need to formulate a plan that can be let's say hiring or shifting people from one project to another and based upon that we will be planning for the human resources in a very efficient may way and we'll make sure that the objectives of that particular project are met so that's how human resource planning hrp or manpower planning works all right so now that you have understood resource planning in construction and the human resource department it is time for us to discuss about human resource planning tools and their benefits so what are the different tools that we can use what are the top tools in the market right now and what are the benefits of using these different tools and technologies so as you can see on the screen the benefits of resource planning tools are number one simpler scheduling if you will try to do it manually it will take a lot of time and the scheduling will be very very complex breaking the project into different tasks then allocating the resources to each and every task will be a very very difficult process but if you do it with the help of a tool the scheduling will be very very simple detailed planning will be there you can write the summary you can write different things and you can allocate it to one person it can all be done virtually with the help of a tool then better overall management enhanced communication there will be more collaboration between the teams the project teams then a stronger forecasting and reduction in meetings because if collaboration is good and everyone is involved in this entire process the overall need for meetings will be very very less so that's the beauty of using the resource planning tools and softwares now there are some top tools that we have in the market right now for example gantic is one then toggle plan is one resource guru is one float is also quite famous now one more thing that you should always remember is that you never choose a particular tool and then decide about the project first of all you have to analyze the project on which you are working then you have to see which tool will be the best for this kind of particular project if you choose the tool first and then you go about deciding the objectives of the project or resource planning it will never be a very good idea because depending upon the project the objectives of the project what is our budget how many human people we are actually planning to have in this particular project based upon all those things we have to decide a particular tool each and every tool will have something which is very good some pros and cons will be there so based upon those pros and cons and the objectives of your project you have to choose a particular resource planning tool for your particular project all right so now that you have understood each and everything about resource planning it is time for me to give you a proper summary of this entire course so that we can revise all the concepts that we have already learned in this particular course i'm very sure that you have learned each and everything that why resource planning is extremely important whenever we talk about any project you also must have seen that why resource planning is in, uh, important in all these different industries specifically we have taken the example of the construction industry and in the human resource department and i'm very sure that you have understood all those things in much more detail in this particular course now we started with the definition of resource planning where we understood that resource is nothing but an input for any particular project where we have to meet certain objectives a resource can be a person can be a team can be a equipment can be a tool it can be anything human resources financial resources non-financial resources in order to make sure that we manage all these resources properly we have to plan for these resources from the very beginning itself you cannot plan for the resources during the execution of the project you have to plan for the resources as soon as you decide the objectives of the project whenever you are going to work on a project there will be certain objectives certain goals that you need to meet as soon as you decide that second step is you have to decide what exactly will be the resources which will be required in order to meet those objectives and that is nothing but your resource planning we have seen resource planning is extremely important in all the industries in it industry because there is rapid and advance advancement in terms of technology in terms of automation it is also very very important in construction industry to make sure that we reduce the uh, conflicts and we increase the profitability we increase the productivity similarly it's not just the equipment and the materialistic resources that we are talking about these are also the human resources whenever we have to decide the number of people who will be working on a particular task on a particular project 
we have to make sure that that number is optimum that number should not be more than the required number and it should not also be the less than from the required number it should be exactly the number which is required to perform that particular task so all these things comes under the umbrella of resource planning and i'm very sure you have learned all these things in detail thank you so much for attending this session if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new update or video releases from great learning if you enjoy this video show us some love and like this video knowledge increases by sharing so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues make sure to comment on the video for any query or suggestions and i will respond to your comments